Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another episode of Archive 5. So if you haven't seen one of these before, basically I get five old unreleased videos, put them all together into one, and then I finally release them. Because I have a lot of material that I've filmed and haven't yet shared with you guys, and some of it is fun, so I thought I would do that. So today we have five random tags. I'm going to put in the description below and also in the bottom of the video down here, timestamps for when you can click in if you just want to see just one of these. So the five random tags tags we are doing today are Madman's Monster Tag by Madman Reads and Rocks, uh, the In Your Pants Tag, the Apple Book Tag, the Nine Circles of Hell Tag, and the Social Networks Tag. And this might get really weird because it's going to kind of go from me here to past me, potentially even then referring again to a different past me. Like there are so many different me's. I think there's like 20 different like dates at which the various bits of footage in this have been filmed but anyway hopefully it'll at least be enjoyable so without further ado i'm gonna crack on with madman's monster tag so here you go over to old dane In enjoy hi guys dane here and today i'm going to do the madman's monster tag now i appreciate this is kind of a halloweeny tag and it's almost christmas so i'm just gonna go full nightmare before christmas and we're gonna go ahead with it because why not it looks fun so this was created by Madman Reads and Rocks, and I've recently subscribed to his channel. I suggest you check it out. He does a lot of cool stuff. So he does book reviews and movie reviews, talks about music. I stole this from Todd the Librarian, who did this at the right time of year. And I thought, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions, and then at the end, I'm gonna tag some people who may or may not want to do this. We'll find out, won't we? As an aside, I got this really cute little mug that's got a little jumper on it. I have a stack of books, as you can see. So, here are the books. Let's do some questions. All right, question one. Dracula. He's a badass with a lot of supernatural abilities and a lot of weaknesses. Name a book you like that contains a lot of plot holes and or uninteresting chapters. So this one for me was quite easy. I've talked about this one on my channel recently. I picked The End of the Day by Claire North. So I did like the way that this experimented and it uh, raised a few questions for you as the reader, but at the same time, it was quite dull and quite tedious, which in itself may have been a plot device. I'm not sure. So check out my review on this one to, uh, to see more on that. This also kind of fits the Madman's Monster theme because it follows a guy called Charlie, who is the harbinger of death as well. So there we go. Question number two, The Wolfman. He's super strong and super aggressive. Name a book that grabbed your attention from beginning to end and left you feeling scarred. So for this one, I've gone for Cell by Stephen King. I actually picked this up. The I used to work above a charity shop and they were literally throwing this book out. So I decided to save it. And it's one of those where the action begins just right at the beginning and just carries on all the way through, which is actually quite rare for Stephen King. He kind of didn't waste as much time going into backstories and developing characters. He just went straight in for a kind of almost a Hollywood blockbuster style plot here. And it's basically about the idea is that when people there's a sudden wave or something that goes out. And as soon as people use the telephone, they turn into a kind of zombie. And it follows that kind of premise throughout as the survivors of the epidemic are kind of dealing with all these zombies, but they're unable to use phones. This also had an ending that just leaves you going, because it's unanswered as well, but it's really good. It's really well done. Question number three, Frankenstein's monster. He's composed of many different body parts and therefore finds it difficult being accepted by most of society. Name a book that tackles more than one important topic and is not well liked by everyone. So I went for a book that was really controversial when it was first published and is now kind of a lot more accepted but you do still get a lot of people who are idiots. So this is The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. This is actually the illustrated version which is abridged and introduced by somebody and uh, yes, Origin of Species. And um, yeah, it covers lots of different topics because it covers things like evolution, um, survival of the fittest and all that kind of stuff. But also as just a kind of book about animals, it's very interesting just to read about different animals and how they work and what makes them tick. Question number four, the mummy. He's dead and wrapped up in gauze, yet he's somehow still kind of scary. Name a book that you feel has a boring beginning but a very interesting ending. So I've gone for The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. This is actually like the end book in my favourite trilogy of all time. And the ending made me cry. So that's how good the ending was. And it was very interesting. I've never really seen it done anywhere else. But at the beginning of this book, 
there is a lot of boredom happening. It kind of has to set the scene for the rest of the, the kind of book. So um, it started slowly, but got a, a hell of a lot better. Question number five, The Invisible Man. He's easy to lose track of and easy to forget about. Name a book that you believe is underrated and or in danger of being forgotten. So for this one, I went for Roar and War with the Newts by Carol Kapek. It's a classic piece of science fiction literature. Roar is actually short for Rossum's Universal Robots, and that's where the term robot came into our society. But it also raises some in question, interesting questions about robotics and artificial intelligence that um, still hold up today, even though this was written years and years ago. And you know, Carol Kapek is kind of well known and Roar is fairly well known, but not as well known as it should be. I mean, I think it should be up there with Isaac Asimov's robots books. Stop pinging tweet that. Question six, Creature from the Black Lagoon. He's amphibious and looks like a cross between a fish and a scuba diver, but he can be pretty creepy when he wants to be. Name a book that creeped you out or made you cringe more than once. This is a classic. I've picked Dracula by Bram Stoker. Genuinely got scared by this book and I read this when I was like 20, 21 and it freaked the hell out of me. In fact, I remember reading a big chunk of this while um, an ex-girlfriend, several ex-girlfriends down the line now. Um, I was staying at her house and her parents wouldn't let us sleep in the same bedroom so I had to sleep downstairs in this like little annex to the living room. And it was really creepy because it was like open plan so you could see the whole floor of the house. And there were like bits of the room that were just shrouded in darkness and I hate the darkness anyway hate other people's houses so I didn't sleep very well and what book did I have to keep me company yeah even the cover the cover was like staring at me question number seven Phantom of the Opera he wears a mask and a cape but he's no superhero name a book that led you to believe it was just another ripoff of others like it but ultimately ended up being something quite unique so I've gone for City of Bones by Cassandra Clare and pretty much all of her writing to be honest I'm very impressed with Cassandra Clare I was really late to this, I mean I only read this earlier this year, and in fact I'd, I'd already watched the Netflix series before them, and kind of got into it that way I guess, but I don't know, I mean it's got Stephanie Meyer on the front, so I'm like, oh god it's going to be a Twilight ripoff, and then the premise of it, it just sounds like so many other YA books if you know what I mean, but it's actually really well done and really engrossing, really well written, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed City of Bones and do need to read the rest of the series. Question number eight, if you could be any monster, who or what would you be? Now, for me, I think I'd be a werewolf because wolves are my spirit animal. I don't believe in spirit animals, but if I did, my, a wolf would be my spirit animal. Don't ask me why, it's a long story. And question number nine, spread the monster love, tag some people. So I tag Kit Kats Can Read, what cast read and Chrissy books and berries. So there we have it. That was the Madman's monster tag. Thank you to Madman Reads and Rocks for making this tag. It was fun. I made a mess of my books, which is always good. And now I'm going to go and put them away. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this. Leave a like or a comment. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought. And I'll see you soon for another video. Bye. Hi folks, Dane here. And today I'm going to do the in your pants tag, which may or may not be an existing tag. But if it's not, we're gonna make it. All right, so the idea is super simple and pretty dumb to be honest, but it made me laugh. So basically I've collected 10 books and then you go through the books, you say the title of the book, followed by In Your Pants. And theoretically it's incredibly entertaining. So I'm gonna do 10 books and then I'm gonna tag three people to do this after me. And then I'm gonna go and put these books back alphabetically. All right, let's just go. Weird mix of books here, Charles Bukowski. The Continual Condition in Your Pants. This book is about exactly what it sounds like, so it's almost cheating to use this, but Jack Barrett, The Erection in Your Pants. A little bit of non-fiction for you, Seth Godin, Small is the New Big in Your Pants. My Girlfriend Selection, Enid Blyton, The Enchanted Wood in Your Pants. Of course, it wouldn't be a list like this without some children's literature. Roald Dahl, James and the Giant Peach, in your pants. <laughs> and you get a little bit tired of it all. Jodie Taylor, just one damn thing after another, in your pants. Comic Fantasy, Terry Pratchett, interesting times, in your pants. A personal favourite of mine, Tao Lin, E, 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 in your pants. <laughs> just because that makes no sense whatsoever, why not? Josh Waltman. Co-producer of Mad Men. Seducing Strangers, 
in your pants. And my last one, Peter James, Dead Man's Grip in your pants. That one sounds painful. And that's it, it's literally that simple and also pretty quick, you know. It's quite nice to every now and then have a tag video that's like under five minutes long, so I will take that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna tag three people to do it next. So I'm gonna tag Kit Kats Can Read, Randomly Bookish Gina, and Madman Reads and Rocks. So there we go, I might have just made up a tag or just repurposed somebody else's tag or I don't know. It is what it is. So on that note, I'm going to go and investigate the cat and see how the cat's doing. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, etc. Suggest some of your own favourite In Your Pants titles. And I will see you in your um, next time. Bye. Hi guys, Dane here. And today I'm going to take the Apple Tag. So the Apple Tag was created by Josh from Literary Gladiators. And I stole it from Todd the Librarian. Without further ado, let's get started. Question number one, Granny Smith, an overbearingly sweet work or character. So for this, I've gone for Rosie Rinkstar, Making It Happen by Janet Rosina West. Now, this book is one that I got sent not long after I started my book blog. So, you know when someone asks you to read something and offers to send it to you and you're just honoured that they asked, so you say yes. I think that's how I ended up reading this. This is literally about like 12, 13 year old girls in, a, in an uh, ice skating, figure skating competition. And it's, I mean, it's 300 pages long and it's just, it's just, it's very badly written as well. But it is, it's overbearingly sweet. It was too sweet. I don't know how I brought myself to read it, which is a shame because I like Granny Smith apples, but this is just how I interpreted that question. Question number two, Fuji, a work about a mountain. So for this I've gone for The Shoulder of Shasta by Bram Stoker. So Bram Stoker is the author of Dracula. He's also written a bunch of other books as this one goes to show. So I want to read the back because the character name is amazing. Okay, so it says, uh, never before published in the United States, blah, blah, blah. California in the 1890s, the wooden slopes of Mount Shasta provide the setting for this drama in which an English rose essay falls for Grizzly Dick. A rugged bear hunter who had been assigned to protect her and her family from the wilds. Not gonna lie, it wasn't particularly good, but grisly dick. Question number three, a Red Delicious, a book that would be perfect if it was only judged by its cover. So for this I've gone for um, Taylor Dawn, Saving London, because this is one by an indie writer friend of mine who um, I actually didn't like this book too much. I thought it was, it reminded me of The Fault in Our Stars, but in a, I guess, kind of a derivative way. Um, but what is really good is the cover and I'll show you why look you open it and the wings come out So I mean this is an indie book so for an indie book cover This is pretty good and uh, it, it won a lot of competitions at the time covered art by Scott Dayett Who is again somebody in the it's all in the circle of indie writers that I know so yes Don't buy that book though. I wouldn't recommend that. I've got other books coming specifically my book <laughs> that You should buy <laughs> Question number four, Golden Yellow, a book with yellow on the cover. So I've gone for Charlotte Street by Danny Wallace, which is a novel. Danny Wallace is actually probably better known, arguably, for his non-fiction. He's written newspaper columns. Uh, he used to be Dave Gorman's flatmate as well. And he's uh, Danny Wallace, is, he wrote Yes Man, for example, which starred Jim Carrey. And that was about he went out and just said yes to everything for a while to see what happened. Charlotte Street, I believe, is his first full-length novel. Um, he has written fiction, other fiction that I've come across. So, But anyway, Charlotte Street. I need to read this soon. It's on my TBR pile. Question number five. Macintosh, a writer that has influenced or would influence your writing. So for that, I've gone for Charles Bukowski. I could have picked any book, but I went for The Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills because what a title. Um, Bukowski influences me not so much in terms of what he writes about, but in terms of the way he writes. It's I find he uses kind of everyday language, and it's very approachable. And I, I try and kind of emulate that in my own writing, I guess. And uh, it's what I like about Bukowski is that it's very simplistic, but at the same time very com like complex as well. There are hidden layers to it, and um, you know his poetry is is lovely. A poem is a city filled with streets and sewers, filled with saints, heroes, beggars, madmen, filled with banality and booze, filled with rain and thunder and periods of drought. A poem is a city at war. There's more to that poem, but I'm not going to keep going. Question number six, Honeycrisp, a book you have read that is in great demand. Now for this one, just because the movie recently came out, I've gone for It by Stephen King. 
Um, I don't have Murder on the Orient Express, which would probably be the other logical one to do. And I don't tend to read all of the booktube staples, like the new John Green book, I don't have that. Um, so all of those in-demand books, I don't have. But I do have it. So, it. Question number seven, Baldwin. A writer you feel needs recognition due to stunted acclaim, whether it was due to something that happened to them or a premature death. So for this, I've gone for The Lords and the New Creatures, which is the unpublished poetry of Jim Morrison. And actually, check out this book. It's awesome. I mean, it's very psychedelic in terms of the colours and whatnot. But um, Morrison was a pretty good writer. Obviously, he was known as a songwriter, but in terms of actually his poetry is pretty good as well. And I kind of wonder what would have happened if he'd have uh, lived longer and had, you know, had time to pursue literature as opposed to music. I think it would have been interesting. Get this book if you can, by the way. I got this really cheap. It was cool. Question number eight. Empire. A work about or set in New York. So... Obviously, clear hashtag favoritism here, but this is Oblivion by Pamelise Harris. So Pam is my editor when I write my books. And this is basically, it's set follows a group of actors at a place called High Garden Academy, New York's, home of New York's most prestigious actors. So this started out as a, nano, a NaNoWriMo project as well, which I think is pretty cool. Question number nine, Gala, a work that fits under many genres. This is the one you should buy because it's my book. Or, well, it's a book that I worked on. It's Subject, Verb, Object, an Anthology of New Writing. And this came into mind purely because it's 18 different writers and they are all different genres, you know, horror and some like travel writing and poetry and all that kind of stuff. I have a story in there. But yeah, there's an interesting mix of genres here purely because there are a lot of different people in it. I'm sure there are others that I can think of, but actually I don't have many... I don't have many anthologies of different genres. I'll either have an anthology of sci-fi writing or I'll have an anthology of all the, sorry my hair's gone weird, or an anthology of all the stories by a particular author but they don't tend to be that diverse so I should I should get more. If you can think of any decent anthologies with lots of different authors in and different genres please let me know with a comment and I will check that out. Okay question number 10, Ambrosia. A long work that was easy to follow. So I've gone for A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, although I guess there's the whole series. And I do think it was very easy to follow considering, it's like the TV show, there's a lot to it and a lot of different layers, but actually as long as you pay attention, it's, it is easy to follow, you know, and uh, I, I mean I read the books, I specifically read the books as kind of ahead of me watching the series, so I read book one and then watched season one and then kind of carried on. And I kind of binged through them over the period of a couple of months and I never had a problem keeping track of who was who or even, it didn't even feel kind of long or torturous to read it. It was uh, a lot of fun. Game of Thrones. Definitely read the books if you haven't read them already, although this is booktube. You probably have. Question number 11. Jazz. A work written in or after 2010 that demonstrates freshness and originality. So I've talked about this a little bit on my channel over the last few weeks. This is The Lucky Ones by Julian Pacheco. And this is uh, one of the shortlisted books for the... God, the full name. Let me try and get it right. The Sunday Times and Peters, Frasers and Dunlop Young Writer of the Year Award in association with Co Warwick University, not Coventry University. <laughs> anyway, what I really like about this, it's kind of people don't know whether to classify it as a novel or a collection of short stories. It's a bit of both. It's very kind of hallucinogenic. Uh, hallucinogenic? Yeah, kind of like that. Hallucinatory, I meant. Dreamlike. It's, um, I don't know. I think it maybe it's an acquired taste. I don't know if everyone would love it, but I personally, I really like the way that it played with language. I like the way that the themes carry between the different stories. And there's a story called Junkie Rabbit in here as well, which was just fantastic. So, yeah, I'm going for this one. Question number 12. Mutsu. A big book that you indulged. Oh, I completely read this question wrong. Okay, well, I'm unsure how exactly to answer this question because I read this wrong. When I was, like, prepping, I just thought it was like a book that you uh, read to indulge yourself with. And so I went... Better Than Life by Red Dwarf because it's my geeky sort of guilty pleasure. It's a novelization of Red Dwarf, the cult TV show. However, I guess as a big book that I indulged upon, my uh, girlfriend says she thinks it means a book that I spent lots of money on, which 
I don't really spend a lot of money on books. However, I have been indulging in this, which is Outlandish Night, The Byzantine Life of Stephen Runciman by Minu Dinshaw. This is another one of those uh, Sunday Times Young Writer Award books. And the reason I guess I've indulged on it, you can see it's massive. It's uh, What's crazy is that this bit after this, these are all the notes, The this bit. So I'm right at the end of it now, but I guess I've kind of indulged on it because this is the only book I've been reading and I've just been kind of trying to binge on it, trying to get to the end. So if you indulge on food by eating too much of it, I have indulged on this book by reading too much of it. Question number 13. What is your favourite apple? Ironically enough, after I slagged off the book I mentioned for this question, my favourite kind of apple is Granny Smith's. I do love me a Granny Smith's. Although I was thinking when I was filming this tag, I, I thought, you know, maybe I should film myself taking a bite out of an apple as part of the footage. And then I realised we have no apples because I am unhealthy and don't eat enough fruit. And question number 14. Apple tree, who do you tag? Okay, basically anyone who hasn't done this already, feel free to go ahead and do it. And let me know if you do it as well. I'll check out your video. But in particular, I'm going to tag Ilse's books and uh, bring the pugs as well, please. Kit Kats can read, Graham Quigley as well. So, that's it. That was a, that was, that's it. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Let me know if any of these books take your fancy, whether you've read any of them before. Let me know whether you're going to get that Jim Morrison book, because it's cool. And I don't know how many of them are in print, but, you know, you should grab a copy if you can. And I will see you next time in another bookish video. Bye-bye. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to take the Nine Circles of Hell tag. So this tag was created by Missy from Binge Reader. Shout out to Missy, love her channel. And uh, yeah, I just decided to do this pretty much. It's kind of an old tag that I'm bringing back and trying to make popular again, because why not? There's actually some footage of me doing this a long time ago. I have a stack of books ready to go. And um, the idea here is that there are nine questions, so one for each of the different circles of hell. We're going to go for a little journey through hell, like uh, good old Dante, and then at the end I'm going to tag three people. So without further ado, let's get started. Circle one, Limbo. What book series have you read the first book of, but have not made the decision to finish the rest? And for me, I know this is a tragedy. I have gone for City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I read the first book and just haven't read any more. I actually picked this up in a charity shop and I've kind of been hoping to get the rest of the series from charity shops. But so far, no joy and this is the only one I've got. But I do want to finish reading this and I have every intention of doing that. Circle 2, Lust. What book do you not own that you cannot wait to get your hands on? Most anticipated. So... I mean, I guess I, I could literally just buy this book. It's out now. I just haven't got around to it. And that is The Book of Dust by Philip Pullman. The reason I haven't bought it and read it yet is because the original trilogy, the His Dark Materials trilogy, is my favourite trilogy of all time. Actually, the first book in it is what I cite as my favourite book of all time as well. So... As much as I do want to read it, I'm also a bit nervous about it. So I've seen a lot of people talking about it, but I haven't really seen anyone review it yet. So I'm probably going to wait for that and see what the verdict is. But I'm sure I will inevitably get hold of it. Circle 3, Gluttony. What book or series could you read over and over and never get your fill? I mean, I think this is a pretty obvious one. This is a standard answer for most people, I guess. I've gone for Harry Potter, as represented by the Chamber of Secrets. Why could I read it over and over and not get my fill of it? Because it's Harry Potter and it's long as well. So even if you did just literally read the whole book series and then start again, by the time you start again, you know, you're kind of ready to start again and go back to the beginning. So why not? Circle four, greed. What book do you need multiple copies of even though you own enough of them? For example, you need the hardcover, softcover, the special edition, the UK edition, etc. So kind of a cheaty answer here and a bit of self promo as well but I have gone for basically any of my own books and this one here is Driven which is my new book and this is the only copy of it in existence at the time of filming and I've literally just bought 40 copies of it because I need spare copies to be able to sell them to people so I guess I'm greedy for my own books <laughs> Circle 5 Wrath what book did you hate and would never recommend I'm going for Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and funnily enough, 
I am actually going to reread this next year as part of Catalyst Reads Rereadathon, which I'll try to remember to link to below. Um, I hated this, but I had to read it for university. I was doing a London in Literature module, and this book was a part of that. And I actually, it's the only time I've ever listened to the audiobook of something before finishing reading it. I usually read something and then listen to the audiobook afterwards as kind of a reread. But for this, basically, I just was hating every minute of it. And I just forced myself to listen to the audiobook rather than to read it so that I could uh, not fail my course. <laughs> Circle 6. Heresy. What book or series got really low ratings or that most people despised but that you loved? Now I'll be honest, I don't necessarily check ratings or reviews and that kind of stuff before I buy stuff. I quite often do it after I buy stuff to kind of determine what to read next. But what did stand out to me for this, I'm going for Just One Damn Thing After Another by Jodie Taylor. The reason being, I was actually sent the first book of this series by the publishers, which is Accent Press. I met them at a London Book Fair. And then after reading it, I posted my review of it. I enjoyed it. And my uncle commented on it saying that he hated it. And he'd actually got books two and three of the series because he'd bought all three, the first three books. And he ended up giving them to me and I still enjoyed them. So happy days. That's the best I've got for you. Circle seven, violence. Which dystopian book or series had the most violent society in your opinion? I'll be honest, most of the dystopian stuff I read is more on the classic side of dystopian. So like A Brave New World and 1984 and stuff like that. And this specifically says violent. And those aren't necessarily violent, because they don't have to be, they already kind of control everything. However, Battle Royale by Kushan Takami. Now, if you know anything about Battle Royale, you know that it is violent. And the book is uh, its excellent, actually. I really enjoyed this book. But it also is possibly even more violent than the movie as well. But definitely recommend this, especially if you've read The Hunger Games because this is the book that they rip off. Circle eight, fraud. What book did the cover or synopsis not truthfully depict the story? Now, this isn't really intentional, but The Stand by Stephen King. Now, let me read you the blurb here. Dark dreams that warned of the coming of the dark man, the apostate of death, his worn down boot heels tramping the night roads, the warlord, the warlord of the charnel house and prince of evil. His time is at hand. His empire grows in the west and the apocalypse looms. And also the cover. I mean, if you've read The Stand, you'll know while that is kind of an accurate depiction, it's probably an accurate depiction of about these pages right at the end. Whereas the rest of this, <laughs> like, I mean, how do you summarise The Stand? It is just absolutely epic. You can't really summarise it in a blurb or in a cover. It's like trying to summarise the entirety of Game of Thrones in one sentence. You just can't do it. Circle 9. Treachery. What book series did the protagonist start off strong but grew weaker as time went on? For this I've gone for Rick Riordan, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. But I actually can't remember now why I picked this book. Purely because I've only read this one book in the series. I think it just kind of reflects my general feeling towards Percy and that I didn't really like him as a character in general. So I guess he did, he started strong and full of potential because everyone rages about Percy Jackson. And yeah, I just didn't like him as a character. I thought he was a little shit, to be honest. So I have no real interest in reading the rest of the series, I guess. And anyway, on that note, I'm on low battery. So I'm going to tag three people and I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian, Graham Quigley as well. And book acts. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a like and a comment to let me know what you think of my choices and whether you've read any of these books as well. And in the meantime, I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi folks, Stane here, and today I'm going to take the Social Network's book tag. So this was created by Faulty Devices, and I'll link to that below. There's also some footage of old me doing this, back when I actually used to work as a social media marketer as well. I mean, I should probably use my own, own book again to pimp it out. So No Rest for the Wicked by Dane Cobain. www.danecobain.com slash no rest. Now I don't do that. Now I write and read books. But those were fun times as well. I have a bunch of books. And as usual, 
as you might expect from a tag video, there are a bunch of different questions and I will answer each of those and then at the end of the video I'm going to tag three people to take this next. Now what's cool about this is all of these questions are based on social networking sites as well. Just bear with me, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. You ready? Alright. Question one, Twitter. A book you want to share with the world. So this is the obligatory self promo. I have gone for Driven by myself. So this is the first book in my new detective novel series. Specifically, I want to share this with the world because it's not actually out yet. So all the work on it is finished. And now it's just going through those final few stages ahead of publication. So I really want to share this with the world and I can't yet, but soon. By the way, let me know if you want to read a copy of this and uh, we'll make it happen. Question number two, Facebook. A book you really enjoyed that was recommended by someone else. For this, I've gone for Round Island with a Fridge by Tony Hawks. And this is literally, that's like a pretty good description of the book. It's a non-fiction book. Tony Hawks is kind of a comedian. He's been on a fair few TV shows here in the UK. Um, he's not super well known, but he is incredibly funny. And this is the true story of when he got a fridge and went around Ireland with it. Literally, let me see, we've got a picture of him with a fridge. Here he is with his fridge. So can you see how big that fridge is? He hitchhiked around Ireland, literally the entirety of Ireland. And this is the story of what happened when he did that and also why he did it. And yes, the pages have fallen out. Question number three, Tumblr. A book you read before Booktube, but haven't raved about much on Booktube. Bloody hell, that question was hard for me to say. I don't know why. Um, I've gone for The Stand by Stephen King, although Possibly by the time this video is out, I have already raved about the stand. So I'm taking part in Catalyst's Reads Rereadathon. To be fair, I'm not due to reread this until December of 2018, so I imagine this video has been posted before then. But yeah, the stand, Stephen King, top book. Question number four MySpace, a book you don't plan on rereading. So for me, I never reread anyway. It's just not something that I really do. Ooh, my Fitbit's telling me it's telling me to wake up. So rereading isn't something that I do anyway. I tend to keep moving forwards. If I do reread, it tends to be through an audiobook. However, in particular, I'm let's be realistic here. I'm never going to reread but, uh, Outlandish Night, The Byzantine Life of Stephen Runciman, which I read for the Young Writer of the Year Awards shortlist, which I was uh, a shadow panel member of, and I'll link below to stuff on that. But basically, I mean, I enjoyed it. It's just I'm never going to reread it. I wouldn't have re I wouldn't have read it the first time if it hadn't been for the shadow panel. Question number five: Instagram, a book with a gorgeous, picture-worthy cover. I'm going to say this one. This is Literary Wonderlands, which is edited by Laura Miller. A journey through the greatest fictional worlds ever created. And this just popped into my mailbox. I didn't request this or anything, but it was sent to me. And it's just a beautiful book in general. I mean, look. Stunning. So, yeah, this is the first book that popped into mind when we thought of a, uh, a really nice cover. YouTube, a book you wish would be made into a movie. So for this, I've gone for Gravedigger by Michael Israel Jarvis. So Michael Israel Jarvis is an indie author friend of mine. I actually used to be his book manager, which meant I was in charge of actually marketing his books. I no longer am, so, you know, I don't know whether I need to do a disclosure there or not. But this is a great book. It's, it's described as spade and sorcery, so it's kind of like a fantasy novel, except the main character is literally a gravedigger. He uses a shovel or a spade, whatever you want to call it, as his main weapon. And I just think this would make a really interesting film, especially because the world building is pretty good here, and obviously they've done a great job with things like Game of Thrones turning them into TV series. Why not make this into a movie? Question number seven, Skype. A book with characters that you wish you could talk to instead of just reading about. So I've actually gone for non-fiction. I've gone for A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. And that's because obviously Hemingway for a start is a character in his own book. But equally, so we have uh, Ezra Pound, Wyndham Lewis, James Joyce, Ford Maddox Ford, Gertrude Stein, Scott Fitzgerald, and others. So Hemingway knew a lot of cool people and they're all talked about in this book. So I wish I could talk to those characters. And that's it for this tag. It's a short and sweet one. I'm gonna tag three people and I'm gonna tag. Todd the Librarian, Catalyst Reads, and Madman Reads and Rocks. And I also tag you if you didn't do this back in the day. And by the way, if I do tag you, don't feel obliged to do it. It's more just a way of giving your channel a shout out. So yeah. 
that is the social networks book tag so thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit subscribe leave a comment to let me know if any of these books caught your eye if you've read any of them yourself and i will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot <clears throat> losing my voice <laughs> thanks a lot bye